that's where you've been. Well, clearly we're not gonna go inside. I'm Angel Castellanos with the Tour Guide, and I'm in the Centro Storico, the historic center of Rome. I've already done the huge Rome in a Day tour, which covers the Vatican, the Colosseum, and even sites like the Pantheon, which you see behind me. But I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into this historic center that is over 2,000 years old, and I have one of the best preserved buildings of antiquity behind me. I'm gonna dive in, let's do this. Let's see the Pantheon and the neighborhood. Let's go. The Pantheon is the most magnificent building surviving since antiquity. It's a must-see on any visit to Rome, but there is more to this neighborhood than just the Pantheon. La paura. I'm spending the whole day exploring the Pantheon neighborhood on today's episode since there are so many cool things to see and do. After fueling up on the best cappuccino in Rome, I'll head to the most significant preserved ancient site in all of Rome, the Pantheon. Then I'll walk to some nearby historic churches to see mind-blowing frescoes and works of art by Bernini and Michelangelo. Mortadella time. After lunch in one of Rome's contemporary restaurants, I'll show you my favorite coffee in Rome, followed by a passeggiata with gelato. The last site I'll check out is a temple dedicated to one of the most famous Roman emperors before ending the day with a classic aperitivo al fresco. So when I'm in Rome, I typically skip hotel breakfast because you have places like Santo Stacchio, which arguably has the best coffee in all of Rome. I'm gonna pop in for a quick coffee and a cornetto and start my day. This is the best way to start your day in Rome. Let's check it out. Cornetto crema, per favore. E una cappuccino. This is my classic, ideal Roman breakfast, a cornetto and crema, which is a croissant filled with a custard cream and a classic cappuccino. It isn't complicated. There's no microfoam or fancy latte art or pumpkin spice or any of that nonsense in the cappuccino. It's three euros and it's absolutely perfect. So one of my Roman friends said that the custard cream is called crema pasticcera which is a custard cream, you know, straight from the pastry shop. Ciao, arrivederci, ciao. Piazza Rotunda used to be part of a massive courtyard surrounded by colonnades in antiquity. It extended far past the church of Santa Maria Maddalena and the ground floor was much lower. This likely made it so the Pantheon stood on a pedestal and concealed the dome as you walked into the structure, creating a surprise effect. La Fontana de Pantheon is a 16th century work commissioned by Pope Gregory XIII and designed by Giacomo della Porta. The fountain was modified in the 18th century, the basin was changed, and the obelisk was added which is original to the time of Ramses II. What my guide told me was really interesting is that it was refurbished and renovated in 1880, and you see the date there, 1880, and that's when they put the obelisk right on top. So it really makes this fountain about 3,000 years old. And to me, that's interesante, interesante. If you like this video so far, or if you just love history as much as I do, go ahead and give us a like, comment, and subscribe. That way we can keep making you great content. At the Pantheon, we come face to face with the splendor of ancient Rome. The inscription in the front reads, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, thrice consul, made this. The 2000 year old temple we see today was not built by Agrippa, but by Hadrian, who skillfully and respectfully pays tribute to the founder Agrippa. Emperor Hadrian was a traveler like us, and his love of Greek architecture can be seen in the exterior of the Pantheon. The monolithic columns are of Egyptian granite on a white marble base. Check out the four pink Oswan marble columns in the middle of the porch. After some damage, these columns were added in the 17th century and are not original to the building. Although ancient for us, the bronze doors are not original as well, and they were likely added in the 15th century, 
when Rome was coming out of the darkness of the Middle Ages. We filmed this episode in February of 2022 when COVID restrictions were still in effect and reservations were mandatory at the time of filming. Also, a green pass was necessary to enter the site. The state of emergency in Italy is set to expire on March 31st, 2022. While the exterior is a testament to Greek architecture, the interior is 100% a Roman temple. Once inside, the dome is unmissable. The imposing hemispherical dome is the diameter equal to the height of the entire structure. And it's the most magnificent and preserved freestanding dome of all antiquity. Wow. Every time I'm in here, the symbolic message of the ideology of ancient Rome, the symmetry, the order, the universalism are not lost on me. The incredible engineering skill inspired Brunelleschi's dome under whose shadow the young Michelangelo grew up. You can just picture Michelangelo standing right here, carefully studying this dome in his preparation to build St. Peter's. While the interior is a Roman temple commissioned by Emperor Hadrian, it has now been converted to a Catholic church dedicated to the Virgin and all the martyrs. In addition to its use as a church, the Pantheon is also a tomb. As well as the grave of the legendary Renaissance artist Raphael, the building contains the final resting place of the first two kings of Italy and the first queen. We are so passionate about the Pantheon that we included it in our Roman a day tour for history nerds like us, because there is nothing like learning about a place from a licensed guide. For more, check out the links in the description below. While there are a multitude of churches you could visit in Rome, there are three historically important churches right here in the Pantheon neighborhood. This is what blows me away about Rome, is that this elephant is by Bernini, and then there's an ancient Egyptian obelisk right on top of it, outside of one of the only medieval Gothic churches in Rome that is built on top of an ancient Roman temple. I mean, you have just layers and layers of history and I think it's like a, a history lasagna. Beautiful! That's the way I like to think of it. Before going inside, let's have a look at these markers to the right-hand side of the door. Rome's relationship with its river has always been a turbulent one, and the river Tiber has flooded and devastated Rome throughout the ages. These flood markers are so high you can't even reach them and they show that the benevolent river god, who is often represented in fountains, could also be destructive. After the last great flood in 1870, Rome finally built an embankment to help contain the mighty Tiber. So this church is called Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, which means St. Mary on top of Minerva, because originally the Catholic Church thought it was on top of a temple to Minerva. It's actually quite wrong, and my guide told me that it was actually built on top of a temple of Isis. And that is interesante. Interesante. You should go inside is because there is a Michelangelo. People pay so many euros to see a Michelangelo, but you can just pop inside of this church and see one for free. Michelangelo's risen Christ was commissioned in 1514 and finally completed by an apprentice in 1521 because it was his second attempt at the project. The impressively muscular figure of Jesus stands strong and is evocative of the version we see later in the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. Just a short walk away is the Chiesa di San Ignazio di Loyola, which houses one of Rome's most impressive and colorful ceiling frescoes. It's a dramatic scene that you can't miss if you're in the Pantheon area. So there are more churches in Rome that you can shake a stick at and you don't have to be religious to come inside and appreciate the beautiful art, very quiet spaces if you need a good place to rest, your feet, come inside of a church, 
hang out, meditate, pray. You know, a good guide will also tell you which of the multitude of churches you should definitely see. We see St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuit order, having a vision of Christ and seeing heavenly light rays extend to the earth's far corners. Every Baroque trick in the book is evident here. The symbolism and perspective of illusion bend the eye from a two-dimensional fresco, sucking the viewer in into a whole dimensional whirlwind of drama. After all that sightseeing, it's finally time to sit down for lunch. In Piazza San Eustachio, a sleek contemporary restaurant called Ginger is around the corner from the Pantheon and always delicious. My friend Kelly first introduced me to Ginger a couple of years ago, and it's one of my favorite places to eat in Rome because it's so cool and fresh and clean and innovative. They have one location near the Spanish Steps and one near the Pantheon that is usually not as crowded. Due to the healthy dishes, the outdoor seating, and chill atmosphere, Ginger is one of my go-to lunch spots in the Pantheon neighborhood. Just a heads up, we don't accept money from restaurants in order to appear in our videos. So Ginger did not pay us to be in this video and we paid for our own meal. All right, so I'm having this really hearty soup here that is made out of farro, mushrooms, and chestnuts. So good. I like a good fruit smoothie, especially after all the uh, bad things that I tend to eat. If you like to explore cultures through food like I do, check out our super fun food tours in the description below. Instead of having a coffee at Ginger, follow me to one of the best coffees in all of Rome. So it's arguable that Tazza de Oro is one of the best espressos in Rome. As much as I love to go to San Eustachio for breakfast and have a cappuccino, I love to come here in the afternoon post-lunch coffee, cafe normale, just a plain espresso. Let's go inside and check it out, okay? Uno. Normale, cafe. Si. Grazie, caro. Si, grazie. Ah, so good. My favorite time of day in Rome is Passeggiata time, and it happens every late afternoon. It's that magic time of day when everyone hits the streets for some fresh air, a casual stroll, and maybe see and be seen. To get that Dolce Vita vibe just right, you definitely need a gelato in hand. There are two excellent gelato shops in the Pantheon area, Giolitti and Fiocco di Neve. Here is why I love both of them. One of the best gelato you can have in Rome is at Giolitti in the Pantheon neighborhood. It is fantastic. It's super fresh and creamy. And it's a perfect partner for a passeggiata. I love having one of these every single day because it's not as fattening as ice cream. So I feel entitled. Fiocco de Neve, it's right around the corner from the Pantheon. Absolutely delicious. And remember, there is more fat in ice cream than there is in gelato, so I'm uh, keeping it healthy. Oh, Giolitti, hands down. Giolitti is the best gelato in Rome, in my opinion. If you're a history geek like me, you're probably familiar with Emperor Hadrian and his profound impact on Rome and the Roman Empire. So when we're talking about ancient Rome, it's hard not to talk about Hadrian, who my tour guide said was probably one of the greatest emperors in all of ancient Rome. And I kind of agree because not only was he a military genius, he was also an openly gay man. And he's gay. Who had a lover named Antonius, who was actually one of the most sculpted people ever in history. And that is interessante, interessante. There is no better way to end an awesome day of sightseeing than with a little aperitivo sesh right here near the Pantheon. Salotto 42 is my favorite place to grab a drink in the Pantheon neighborhood. So refreshing. This hole in the wall cocktail bar is famous for its aperitivo, craft cocktails, and ever-changing interior design. And the view of the Temple of Hadrian is fantastic. I'm Angel Castellanos for the Tour Guide. It's been a fantastic day exploring this neighborhood of Rome. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you can find our next video.
Rome, the Cento Stori, the Cento, Centro Storico. Centro Storico. Centro, Centro Storico. Cento, Centro Storico. Maybe I'm not going to say that. Centro Storico. Hello, Angel. <laughs>